Ladies, how are you? Oh, you can't answer me anyway. Anyway, um, I'm at Darrenburg Winery, Darry's Veranda, having lunch here on a Saturday morning. Saturday, it's not morning, is it? It's, it's afternoon. afternoon. We're in McLaren Vale in South Australia. Um, in my opinion, the best wine region in South Australia. Some people like the Barossa. That's good and that's great. I'm a McLaren Vale girl. Anyway, Darry's Veranda. Yum, I'm having degustation today. Um, I was talked into degustation. It didn't take much to talk me into it. Just saying, just saying. I have a friend that works here. Um, I was very lucky to get a table. Here she is. Hi. That's Kira Lee. I was very lucky to get a table. Um, how special am I? They have a Peruvian chef and I'm gonna try his ceviche. I am dying to try his ceviche. So, I'll get back to you. I'll talk to you later. Mwah, love you. So I've got something special for you. Um, we're going to hear a little bit of a story as to why Darrenberg's Money Spider was called Money Spider. And we're going to hear it from Kira Lee. So she does, I don't know if she wants to be taped, but you just keep talking, okay, Kira Lee. Talking. So, so the Money Spider, when Chester planted the first vintage, or the, the first uh, crop of grapes um, for this particular vintage, um, when it comes to picking the grapes for harvesting and, and for vintage time, they were covered in money spiders. And apparently there is an old adage that, you know, to get rid of the money spiders is actually quite bad luck. So rather than get rid of the money spiders, he let the spiders have that vintage, uh, have that crop, and they vintage the next year. And that's that's how he came up for the, the name for this particular wine. And I just love that story. I think that's that's really cool. Because I totally would have done exactly the same thing. How cool is that? <laughs> that yeah. is cool. That will still find though is really, really beautifully, but try and get a little bit of the fluid and the fix together when you have that one as well. Right. So what's that one called? The Hermit Crab, Viognier Massan. So a little bit more tropical, stone fruit, apricot flavourings with a really crisp pineapple finish to it as yeah, well. So mm. a lot of fruit drive to it on that one. Beautiful summertime barbecue style wine. It's also uh, my go to Thai food wine. Anything with a bit of fresh chili. Uh, of course. Yeah, those chili of course. flavors. And then even with a bit of that uh, lemon and wine zest, a bit of acidity cuts through really beautifully as well. Yeah. I've actually got a bottle in my fridge at the moment. Yeah, it's so good, it isn't is it? Really it's good. so nice. So they're going to go really nicely. So you've got yeah. the softer style, you've got the sweeter style, then you've got the tropical style. Beautiful. So you can just get an idea of, they all go beautifully. Yeah. Mm. And ceviche. Um, yeah, good, thank you. The flavours. So delicate. I have tears in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, almost me too. <laughs> I have tears. This, look. Um, I'm going, I can't turn you, I'm going to turn, see, this is, that's what it looks like, right? There's kernels of corn, right? And you've got the delicate, the delicate flavours of kingfish. You've got popcorn, popcorn. And then you just get this little... And then you get different textures, like constantly different textures. Your mouth is going, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. And then... The flavour is different. It's so, so soft and so tender. It's like the chef, when he made this, he's making love to the ceviche. He's so tender the way he's made it. There's so much love that went into making this ceviche. Tell you, there's chilli in this. Okay? It's not chilli, chilli, hot, hot chilli. It's chilli... Huh. Yeah, it's like it, because if it was hot, it would overtake the flavour of the kingfish. And you know what he did? He thought about the kingfish is my hero. The kingfish is my love. But what I want to do is make my love taste even better. So what he's done is he's the chili. It's married. It's married to this kingfish. That's that's how much it loves it. It's married to this kingfish. I've tried it. I have tried Darry's signature lobster bisque. How can a bisque get you stoned? <laughs> I want to know. My eyes rolled back to the back of my head. I saw my brain. I was so, my God. This, nothing will prepare you for this.
You, heaven itself is nowhere near as beautiful as this lobster bisque. You will. Oh, we have. Yes, I was. That that gets you stoned. <laughs> it's good, isn't it? <laughs> my eyes rolled to the back of my head. I saw my brain. I can't believe you shared it. <laughs> this stuff, this octopus. Here it is. It's covered with green stuff. Mm. Oh my god. Mm. I hope it's so good. There's watermelon and fennel salad. Um, oh, Spitting rice ball. Beautiful Granny Smith apples. There's a floral note of frangic honey in there as well. There is also one big difference between all three of them. So the Lucky Lizard is 100% grown in the Adelaide Hills, as mentioned before. Uh, so that cooler climate gives it a little bit more of a softness, so it's a little bit on the lighter side. The Olive Grove has actually spent time in French and Old American oak, so if you're looking for our woodier style of Chardonnay, it would be the Olive Grove. And then the Witch's Berry actually has traces of Viognier and Massan through it, so the hermit crab that you had mm. before, it has traces of that, which also brings a bit more of a tropical note to it. So as well as those beautiful apple flavours, you will get a bit of stone fruit, so a little bit more of those apricot flavourings, as well as pineapple, which is obviously going to go really gorgeously with the white peach and pineapple sorbet. Mm. Also a cellar door exclusive, so if you ever see these little paint strips on our bottles, it's actually indicating you can only purchase it through our cellar door. So if you like it, stock up on it before you leave. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. You don't know what a GSM is? No. What's the GSM? Grenache Shiraz Mavet. So it's a ah. blend of the cheese. So percentages vary depending on who's made them or how they want to do them. Some people prefer a more dominant Shiraz flavour in the, in the GSM. Some people like more... Um, more Grenache in there. Yeah. Mavet they'll usually just use around the 5-10% mark just to give it a little bit more of a savoury note. So going off of the Bonsai Vine, so this is what we would call more of a drink now style wine. So if you are looking for a lovely one to open up any day that ends in white really, this would be the one you want to go for. So we've got the 47% Grenache, 47% Shiraz and just 6% of the Vedra as mentioned before. So if it's 5% and over of any particular grape bridal, it must be put on the label. Anything under that, they can actually get away with not putting it on there, they can just put it in their notes on the back. Ah, uh, okay. So you get those beautiful plummy flavours of the Grenache, you get that really richness of the Shiraz and then you'll get again more of the savoury note of the Mavedra um, or probably known as Mataro as well. Um, so more of a 50-50 style blend this one. The ironstone pressing is more Grenache based, so you've got 70% of Grenache in that one, you've got 25% of Shiraz and just the 5% of the Vedra. So you'll find this to be um, definitely more Grenache feel. So again, those rich plum flavours with also the dark berries of Shiraz, so blackberry, blueberry, you'll even see in the colour just how deep the rich it is. Um, and this is one of three of our icons. So you've probably heard of the Dead Arm Shiraz. Yes, oh, yes. With his fillet steak. So yeah, needs no introduction to that one. Dead Arm Shiraz, we've also got the Copper Mine Road Cabernet Sauvignon, which is our savoury style of the three. So more of those childhood capsicum flavours. And then we have the blend of the Einstein Pressing DSA. These are all made for cellaring for about 10 to 15 years. Ah, okay. If you can hang on to wine that long, then yes, we can. Keep increasing and developing over time. Uh, if you like, we oh, need to get some. Hanging on to your wine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ten to fifteen days. Just, just <laughs> oh, but, uh, we serve it in the big beautiful glasses just to get that little bit of air with it as well. If you don't own a decanter, you should definitely get one. You should get all your wines. It does make a beautiful difference. Yes, it does. This was actually just before you started, Kez. We did a. Um, we did a blind tasting over in the stables. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we went in and there was bottle A, B and C and they were all in brown paper bags and we had to take notes and say what we enjoyed oh, wow. and what we didn't enjoy about them. And it was actually unanimous, everybody enjoyed bottle C. And then we found out it was all the same bottle of wine, just opened at different, different times. times. Yep. So it, it was amazing, it really opened our yeah. eyes to what a difference that does make. Yeah. So the one that we, we sort of didn't like it, the one that we probably were like that, yeah, 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 yeah. Was the one that was open right before we came in. The one that we thought was pretty good was open about an hour prior, and the one that we all loved was open that morning. So it does make a difference to open up your wines to can them, get a bit of air to them. So anything around the 25 30 dollars, you've got that. Any of your old vintage wines, definitely get a bit of air to those. I'm talking, you know, anything with a bit of age on it to can them, make sure you get the um. 
uh, the aerators. Yes, we've got one of those. Um, beautiful, just to catch any sediment. You yeah. might need to double decant some of those, but yeah, a little bit of air does make them. We yeah, we use the aerator for every time we pour wine. It, they're, they're fantastic. They're yeah. Yeah. yeah, and even those like those um, diamond shaped cans that you, you spin. spin. Yeah. yeah, they're great. Awesome. They? Yeah. And they're phone a party because you can yeah. It's a novelty. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we need to get one of those too. <laughs> I, I, I honestly, I wish that we sold the little air races over. That would be handy if you yeah. had that. I think they're, they're not that common to come across. No, they're not. People actually get them online. It's, yeah, we did. Yeah, we bought yeah, all I ours online. Seen them in stores or anything mm. like that, but something they might need to look into. Um, you just missed out. Oh. I finished. It was um, all that? the fillet steak. It, it was. Mm. You don't need a knife. You just like. Or I just make sure I need a fork. Just a lot of crackling. It was so soft. It was so beautiful. The the beef, and then there's beef. This is, and then there's beef. Um, excuse me. It was. It was divine. It fell apart. It was lovely. Before this one, we had. Pardon me. Had a palate cleanser. It was a white peach sorbet with, um, and I can't remember the wine that they poured over the top. Riesling. Riesling. They poured a Riesling over the top. Chardonnay. Oh, Chardonnay. Sorry. Okay, they poured a Chardonnay over the top. I knew that. Why did I say Riesling? <laughs> I had a little bit of it, but because it had a, some, a lot of wine in it, I had to give the rest to my husband. <laughs> but I can tell you, when paired, when the white peach sorbet was paired and mixed with the Chardonnay, it had a, so, a draft cider sort of aftertaste, a multi, yeah, a draft cider. Bread you could drink. Yeah, 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 draft, yeah, and um, you could, I could have sculled that quite easily, like because it was refreshing. It was really, um, but the beef, pretty good beef. Mm. Next time I'm here, I want to try their duck. I love duck. Oh, you won't be yeah, I love duck. Next time I'll, I'll have duck. Um, I think we might have a bit of a break and a bit of a relax and let the main course sort of go through us. And then I've got a great dessert. Cheese first. Oh, yeah. We're ordering. <laughs> We're getting cheese first. We're ordering the cheese course okay, before. So okay, okay, then. See you later. Ladies, um, totally going to have dessert in a second. We're just going to eat. We're eating cheese because that's what you do. Um, and we'll be having dessert in a minute. I've only got 9% left, I have to be honest with you. And that was a total burp. Um, yeah, we're going to have a gin bomb thing of some sort. Alaska. There'll be... Bomb Alaska. Bomb Alaska? Oh, we still got to have like... Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a bomb. It's a gin and tonic bomb for dessert. We still got lanyaps before that. We're going to have lanyaps. I don't know what a lanyap is. It's so... a pre-dessert. Okay, we're going to have pre-dessert dessert. Because dessert. that's what you do in a degustation. Duh. Um, anyway, I've got 9% left. This is going to be my last... My last, like talking thing to you because I've had way too much coke and sugar and sugar. So if you want to see photos you're going to have to hit my Instagram. All the socials will be down in the description. Thank you very much for watching. Please hit that subscribe button and the thumbs up button if you've liked the video. If you haven't, shit what the hell are you doing here? Because you shouldn't be watching the whole video and then pressing the thumbs down video like button. Okay? Alright. Love you all. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.